I think we're live. Yeah, up the irons. I'm in an Iron Maiden mode. There it is. Every one of those riffs played by the original band <laughs> in the Cape Cod Coliseum. All of those. Um, um, so many. <laughs> so many bands. Yeah. Who do we got? We got Bill, Tony, Third. Blackjack, BC Rich, Peter, Wah! Sky Prop, Stefan Sassy, Yeti Nazi, Hit Metal Work, B Tech, John Doe. We got, uh, we got Rev G from Scotland. I agree. All of those riffs. Played at the Cape Cod Coliseum. All right, who we got? Yeti Matsu Guitar Man, Beastie Rich, Ferd, Sky Prop, Ellie, Eli Jr., Gary Davlin, Speaker! My mic clipping a little bit. I could be a little, could be a little hot here. Slight distortion on the mic. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check the microphone. Could be the battery's a little dead though. It does make a little clip a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Oh, what, where is my control? I check one, two, check one. I might, I might stop it a hair. <coughs> check, 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 yeah. Right, soften it, take it down the hotness, a little hot there, hot shot. Do 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 do, do 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, 
anyone ever played an illusionist at the Cape, but <clears throat> they wanted to, but sadly it hadn't been invented yet. It's one of those time things. <laughs> No, a little bit. You out of line a little bit. No, look, no, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I've been on a Cape Cod Coliseum Jag for like uh, three hours. We got Colin, John, Mike, Scott. <laughs> Sassy Cat. Super Lee. Music sound yet. Music therapy last. Fred. Hit Metal West. Eli. Joe. <laughs> we having fun yet? What the hell is in that coffee? Hey, that pork chop was big. I did see Bowie, but not at the Cape Cod Coliseum. I saw him in a jumbo stadium. By the time I got to see Bowie, I saw Bowie twice, both times. It was in a 65,000 seater. The max capacity of the Cape Cod Coliseum is 6,500. And it, you, most people brought in. Of course, what's so funny is Kiss claims to have had 7,500 one night. <laughs> I was like, I think it's occupancy max is 6,500. They're like, yeah, well, Dr. Gene. <laughs> 7,500. Yeah, well, we had 7,500 people there last night. <laughs> huh. It's, it's odd. Uh, yeah, full of energy. <laughs> You think my battery might be dying? Is it getting worse? Is it getting more disturbed? Okay, hold on. It could be the battery. You know what? I have a pack of fucking batteries right here. Hold on.
Check, check, still working. <laughs> that is a new battery. The, um, what had happened was, is that the spring that holds the battery in was a little bent at the bottom. And I couldn't quite get the new battery like in. You have to like get it underneath it and, 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 and push it up. And so the only way you can really do that is you need like just a little something to push it out of the way and a screwdriver wasn't working. I needed to get a small set of this little most of the pliers with a very small snout to get in there, push the spring out of the way, push the battery in, and voila. As they say in France, viola. Exactly, the old classic bent spring situation. I hate when that happens. Thing is, is once it gets a little stretched, there's no pushing it back, because it's a spring. <laughs> Springs spring back to where they, you know, they settle. Once that metal is stretched, it's stretched. Is is it sounds better now? It, it could be a lot hotter now because of the. Um, I might have to bring that down just a hair. Check, check, check. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds way better now, yeah. Good, good. Not too hot, not too hot, not too not too cold. Are we in the Goldilocks zone? He's having an episode. And where is my roadie? God damn it. Oh, he's right there. Sorry, bro. <laughs> F that guy. Oh, how have I been? I have been good. This week has been uh, good. We had, as I was complaining about last week, as I like to do, um, it's been like wicked humid. But some drier air blew into town. And damn, if I wasn't like just like out of the yard, like freaking nonstop, taking care of all the stuff I wouldn't do when it was humid. So, you know, I felt like I got a lot. Got that, you know, pressure washed all the walkways and everything. That was way overdue. I edged all the lawn. Had to do, there's a whole bunch of crap I had to do. Yeah. Drove in a beacon hell. Yeah, traffic downtown is a little nutty because of the they closed the um, they closed the tunnel, right? So trailer update. I actually did work. I actually did work on the trailer a little bit this week. Um, God, it was. It has swimming pools of water in it with the tarp, <laughs> like giant, like falling in and just like literally filling the whole thing up. You know, probably a hundred gallons. Oh my God! Trying to get it right over, get the friggin'. I was like, wow, that's uh, that's that's crazy. You know, I had to empty a lot of water out of it because it's been so friggin' rainy. But the rain finally blew through. Um, not last night though. All this talk, God. But they're talking the essay. Oh, there's gonna thunderstorms and it's gonna be rainy and be batting down the hatches and nothing. Bumpkiss, zero zilch. You know. So. So we um. Got uh, some trailer work done. I had to pull out the tarp from underneath the trailer and clean all that out. Take the tarp out from on top of the trailer. I started to look a little bit more at the wiring to finish the wiring up. And um, I got some jacks for it. 
You fam are you familiar with the jacks? They sort of fold underneath. They attach to the frame. And of course, you know, the it wants to go to a like a, a normal frame, not my stupid, you know, 1953 Ford Fairlane friggin' frame, whatever the hell that thing is. Uh, but it, uh, it, they're nice. And they, um, what I can do is I can just put them down in the back and always have them down when I have it seated in the driveway. That way I can always just like walk up into it and I don't have to worry about the thing all wobbling around, right? Uh, you have the front down, you have the jacks in the back. If I feel like the front is getting a little, you know, out of control and wobbly, I can always add jacks in the front, but I was hoping to just do two in the rear and, and, and sort of be done with it. Plus, I have a roll-around wheel I can put on the front, you know. Exactly, she's got the jack. Probably like, like almost like a like a seventh. Do a nice open string E. You know. Exactly. Nothing's worse when things are all wobbling around. Exactly. Huge thunderstorm this morning. We had nothing. We had just had talk. Well, I have it in parallel mode right now. That's in humbucker. I know. I don't. I don't. I'm not good at the thumb. Better off to do the. Paint the fence yet? No, but I pressure washed it, so it's getting ready to get painted. You know, I just have to get a, you know, when a week when the rain isn't on the schedule, which has been hard this summer. It's probably going to be um, sometime, but usually August we, we, we get into a drought, but last year at this time we were in a mega drought. My whole yard was just brown. Making you go to dizzy cam. Do you send me money? What is your pin code? Do do. Just paint you up for the fence. I was thinking for the trailer. Did you think that you think it's the software that makes it sound great? <laughs> well, let me grab one of my kids to play the guitar. See, see how it goes. <laughs> I 
I would just say that um, uh, it's 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 a lot with the player. I, I you hear it over and over and over again, you know. Especially like with very consistent players like Joe Satriani. You really you really hear it in his playing. He just he he's, he's got it down. The dude's got it down. It's what we all strive for. Exactly, it's the orange amp that always makes it sound good. What happened to the Coliseum? Yeah, we're, we're about 20 minutes into this. We might as well get into it. Um, so the Coliseum is a very interesting venue. It's not a big venue, you know. Um, uh, it has quite the history. I think it's built in the early 70s, I want to say like 72, something like that. And it's built as a hockey arena because the guy who built it wants to start. The Bruins are doing really well, right? Maybe they won the Stanley Cup in 70 or something like that, right? So, you know, it's like a hockey thing and, you know, maybe we'll start a league down here. So he basically builds a hockey arena, but they can only go so high, so the stands don't go up very high. I think it holds like at max 5,000 people when it has the ice on the floor. And they didn't run concerts in the winter because they had ice on the floor. Right? They had a winter league. A Cape Cod league that had, like, you know, games. Um, so, but towards the end of the hockey league, the concerts were selling out, but the the, the hockey club was... was getting 2,500 people for a 5,000 seater. So the stands were half empty and sort of the writing was on the wall that it, the hockey experiment so, sort of failed. But he has this venue which can hold usually about 5,000 people. It's a general admission venue. Basically they, but they say it's about 6,500. Yet you, you gain about, you lose the people behind wherever the stage would be set, up in the stands, right? So you lose one end of the building. But it's a hockey arena, so it's very long. But they don't go up very high, right? Those sides do not go up very high. It's not a very tall building. Um, so, you know, when you open up the floor, it would I think it would max out at about 6,500 people, which is, you know, that's a pretty small, that's not a huge venue, 6,500. Just by comparison, if you have a concert at... Um, the Providence Civic Center, which is another local venue, that can hold about 11,000 people when there's a concert. Fewer when there's a hockey game, but about 11,000 a concert. The Boston Garden can hold 14,000 to 15,000, depending on the seating arrangement. So, again, your 5,000 to 6,500 seater, not that big a place. You know, and they would just, they would get, they would get these acts, man. And I, I saw, I thought it was the last act. It was the second to last act that ever played there. And that was Iron Maiden in August of 1983, 40 years ago this month. It was August 27th. And uh, that's a whole crazy story. With my cop car. And, oh, God, what a what a crazy night. And a friend of mine's parents were up in Boston to see, like, Liberace. And we were going to spend the night at his house. And then we went back. And he goes, oh, no. What? My parents are here. What? He goes, yeah, they must have drove back down. What does that mean? That means good night. <laughs> he, like, walks in. See ya. Like, what, what, what do we do? We went and, like, slept down the beach. Till the friggin' rain came, pouring rain in the middle of the night. Massive thunderstorms are sitting in my cars. It's like practically hailing on us. That's uh, that, that's how I remember, remember August 27th. And I broke a belt in one of my tires. My car was wobbling. You ever break a belt in a you know, radial? Right? So the car, so the wheel, so it, it, like, it slows speed. When you're going fast, you don't notice it because it's going so fast. But at slow speed, your car rocks side to side. I thought I was the assholes in the back seat. I was ready to start punching skulls. I'm like, if you motherfuckers don't stop this, I'm going to come back there and I'm going to start beating the piss out of you bastards. They're like, it's not us! <laughs> it's 
badass. I'm like, I am, I am losing it. But it wasn't. I broke a radial belt. So uh, anyway, uh, just just a little highway driving. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Seriously. The, the thing is, if you know anything about coming back from the Cape on a, you know, on a weekend, you know that you're not getting over about maybe 10 or 15 miles an hour for about 40 miles, you know, on the highway. It's just bumper to bumper the whole freaking way. Um, anyway, um, so he, he, he has this hockey venue. And uh, it's going, and he does summer concerts, right? So the concerts start in, like, the spring, like May, and they end by, like, the first weekend in September, usually. So Santana was the last band. They're the only known band after Van, after um, Iron Maiden. was uh, That was August 27th. Santana came in September 4th. That's the last listed show, is Santana, on September 4th of 1983. And the building was sold to a guy named Vince McMahon. Apparently, he started a thing called the WWF out of the building. And he used to run what they call wrestling in this building. And um, uh, he did that until 84. And started a bunch of some like Titan Sports Entertainment. He started a bunch of companies out of the building. That's pretty much where he started. And, um, but eventually it, it was prohibitive to have the shows there. You know, it's not the easiest to get to, right? It's all the way down the Cape. And so he, he wound up selling the building to Christmas tree shops in 1987. Vince McMahon did. And, uh, yeah, back when it was uh, the WWF until the World Wildlife Foundation, after like 20 years of litigation, finally said, no, fuck you. <laughs> we have lawyers too. Vince was like, sue us. They were like, okay. <laughs> sure. Is that, is that what you need? Of course, he lost. They won. And he begrudgingly had to change it to WWE. And uh, they're like, uh, anyway, um, he sells it to Christmas tree shops who use it as a warehouse. They don't use it. They use it for storage, right? They build, they put shelving in and pretty much make it into a giant storage warehouse. The reason why it comes up is because the Christmas tree shop is in bankruptcy. And so it's like, what are you doing with the goddamn Cape Cod Coliseum, <laughs> right? What's going what's gonna to happen with the Cape Cod Coliseum? You know, it might just stay, remain storage. <clears throat> There's a giant, like, plumbing supply house distributor in, in, like, a third of the building now or a quarter of the building. So it's never probably going to ever become a venue. There's no parking there any longer. All It's all surrounded, you know, by stuff. So it's like, there's really no place... It used to have a lot more parts. It used to be much more wide open, but it's all been built around it now. And it's never, I think, ever going to become a venue because I don't think you can handle people like that. It's most likely going to become a giant storage warehouse or something on those lines. But uh, who knows what it's going to be? Uh, I suspect it's going to be storage. It's just like the front is a giant plumbing supply storage warehouse. That's most likely what it'll become. Right, right then it was a storage for Christmas tree shops. But they're they're in, they're in a bankruptcy. So um, you know, you just look back uh, at the shows that went through the Cape Cod Coliseum, and it is just stunning. Um, it, they start in '73, uh, like the first summer after the building is made. So I think they the building's made in '72. They do the first winter, right? Go '72, '73. And now it's the first summer, and they're crossing over, and they're doing, they're going to do, um, uh, what you would call it, um, uh, concerts now. So, uh, these are the concerts. And, and, and of course, it's this Jerry and the Pacemakers and Herman and Hermits, this is all part of it, like a triple bill, the 60s rock invasion, right? 
Right, so they're all on the same date with this Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders, this Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. You notice that they're all on July 1, right? Because this is just like a, you know, it, it, it's it's one of those, we got, you know, five different bands on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, on the bill. And then a nice double bill, you got Ray Charles with Earth, Wind, and Fire. That, that's a pretty damn good bill. You got Jim Croce. This is the first <clears throat> first one I've seen on another site, which is Uriah Heap with Earth, Wind, and Fire. If you look on this site, this is really the bill. It's Uriah Heap with Earth, Wind, and Fire and ZZ Top. I'd, I'd hit that. <laughs> what well, I mean, Jesus. This is a more complete list, though. But they separate all the bands out by their set list. So, you're not seeing them sort of mash together. There you got Aerosmith. They're playing there in September of 73. Ario Speedwagon. Who knew they were a band in 74, right? You just remember them from like 79 and 80. <laughs> Johnny Winter. 10CC. The Beach Boys. King Crimson. Golden Earring. Bow, 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 bow. Was it, was it, uh, or is that uh, Radar Love? Radar Love. Uh, yeah. All right. There's your Bowie, your Bowie show. That's July 17th of 74. And again, you can go in here. They might have, do they have, they don't have the set list. Some of them they have the set list, some of them they don't. Let's go to 16, M ELP. Three Dog Night, Marshall Tucker Band, Blue Oyster Cult. They seem to play there a lot. They're with Aerosmith. Uh, Journey. BOC. Again, this is 75. This is pretty early stuff. Hot Tuna. Poco. Dave Mason. Again, this is the same, right, same date. P-Funk. <clears throat> Utopia. James Taylor. ZZ Top with Stars and Blue Oyster Cults, right? All the same night. You wonder if it's BOC that's headlining. Who's the headliner there? In 76, it could be BOC, right? I feel like ZZ Top doesn't really bust out until like 78 or 80, right? Seals and Croft. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going through time here. Billy Joel. This is Kiss, and opening for Kiss is Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. That's a there's a show for you. And in that thumbnail I showed you at the, in the in the video of this that that photo of Ace Frehley, that's from the Cape Cod Coliseum. There were a lot of photos of that show of Kiss. Somebody was in there with a camera that night and took a lot of photos of Kiss that night. There are lots of photos of Kiss at the Cape Cod Coliseum. You got Nils Lofgren opening up for the Jay Giles band. Jay Giles played there a lot. They're probably the biggest band, like the most um, uh, uh, appearances at the venue. Peter Frampton, Skinnerd, Skinnerd with Jeff Beck. Skinnerd, I'm pretty sure, is opening for Jeff Beck. Right. Jay Giles again. Let's go to. Yeah, this is a great bill. This is Brian Ferry opening for the Cars. The Kinks. More on that later. I I I didn't have tickets to the July second, nineteen seventy seven show, but I could have gone to a later show. We'll get to it. I didn't go. We'll we'll. we'll Cross that when I get there, but keep the kinks in the back of your back of your head. <laughs> because you know what? It really killed me on that Kinks tour is that they were touring on the One for the Road tour. And I knew that whole album like the back of my friggin' hand. I love that album, One for the Road. And they pretty much played the set list from that friggin' album. Here's another triple bill. You got Stars, Ario Speedwagon, and Blue Oyster Cult. Johnny Winter headlining. 
You got the Outlaws. Oh, no, wait. Johnny Winter might have been... Oh, no, that's 77. That's 78. All right. And that's September. That's June. Okay, I thought it might have been with Johnny and the Southside Johnny, but he wasn't. There's a cheap trick, but I think they're opening. It's June 15th. I think they're opening. Is there another June 15th? No. All right, so they're headlining. Interesting. Because they're on... You can see them in other ones. Three Dog Night... ZZ Top Lewis to Cult, Kiss Bob Seeger, Peter Frampton with Heart opening. There's Jay Giles, Brian Ferry in the cars. There's a kink show. There's BOC, REO, and Stars. There's Heart. Dave Messon in the Dave Mason in the Pusset Dart Band. I used to I used to work uh, at a law firm with uh, Jim Pusset's uh, like wife. Uh, all the people you meet. Yeah, yeah, this is a set list. Um, cheap Trick, again. Oh, see, there they are. This Cheap Trick opening for BOC. See, I thought Cheap Trick was more opening. Right, there's Boz Skaggs with the Little River Band. Boz Skaggs and Little River Band. So there's a, there's a double bill for you. Oh, I'm losing my freaking my mouse here. Here we go. Do, do, do. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. That July twenty second. I mean, these are these are just incredible. Again, J Jay Giles. That's the summer of seventy eight. I'm twelve. Uh, Ted Nugent with Nantucket. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if Ted Nugent's opening for Nantucket. Uh, Foreigner, Walter Egan, Styx, Michael Stanley Band. That's probably opening for Styx. Uh, Doobie Brothers, then Lizzie. And there's, there's photos of the Thin Lizzie playing there. And here they are, September 4th, 1978. Van Halen. Man. As you see in Van Halen. In that tiny venue, Black Sabbath, I mean, with right, and it's in, in September of '78. That's Aussie, right? That's still with Aussie. I mean, can you imagine that? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm going down, I'm going down the friggin' Cape Cod Coliseum. It's like seeing him with the goddamn Melody Tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a three thousand seater. <laughs> <laughs> Go to see Black Sabbath. Jesus. That is unbelievable. Again, cheap trick. Looks like they're headlining. More Jay Giles, Jay Giles. But Van Halen. Imagine seeing freaking Van friggin' Halen. There's the Kinks, August of 79. It's not this one. I don't think it's the August of 79. I think it's the next year. I think it's 1980. Van Halen. There's the set list. Opening up with Light Up the Sky, you know. Can you imagine that? Do it. And then the drum solo. He always does the drum solo early. He always does it after like the the second friggin' song, uh, first song. So funny. And maybe because he's fresh, riding with the devil, dance the night away, the bass solo. You're no good. Jamie's crying. Feel your love tonight. I love tonight. I mean, I love again. Uh, Ice Cream Man ain't talking about love. The guitar solo, which is eruption of Spanish fly into you, really got me. Bottoms up and Atomic Punk. Oh my God, what a set. <laughs> what a set. Doobies. They're playing the 25th and the 26th. The Grateful Dead. They're playing the 27th and the 28th. Van Halen comes back in May of 1980. We were trying to book them at... Uh, 
at Zavarian High School to play in October of 1980, and they wouldn't do it. Probably would have paid as much money. You know? That, that school had deep pockets. And we wound up getting BOC off the Black and Blue Tour. And uh, the rumor was is that the band got like 15K and the, another 10K for uh, uh, expenses, like 25K. Probably not a bad day's pay. Hart, Tommy Two-Tone, Tom Petty, Allman Brothers, Hall and Oates. The Fools. <laughs> if you've ever seen the Fool Show, right? The, the singer's always running late. And they used to, they used to, of course, they, it was eventually became a cell phone, but they used to bring a phone out, like a fake phone, on a wire, on a cable. And they used to like tape it up to the microphone and have him sing the first, the first song on his way there. Man. <laughs> something like, you know, it's like so crazy. He used to do some crazy skit. And then jump out on stage. Then, of course, there was The Stools, who I think who did Life Sucks, Then You Die. Again, there's Santana. More Jay. Jay Giles played there, like, seemingly forever. Right? <laughs> Rush. Imagine seeing it. And they open with the 2112 Overture. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you know, imagine this. Imagine this shit. You go to see Rush, and they open up with 2112. Free Will. Xanadu. Uh, an early version of Limelight. The Trees, Spirit of the Radio, Closer to the Heart, an early version of Tom Sawyer, right? These songs aren't even out yet. Jacob's Ladder, right? The 1980? Is, is, is it out or just about to come out? Right? Is Tom, is that come out in 80? 81? When's uh, I think 80, right? Jacob's Ladder, Passage to Bangkok, Working Man, Finding My Way, Anthem to Steel Day in the Mood, Drum Solo, the last song, then they come back for uh, La Villa in the, uh, holy shit, in a 5,000 seater, 6,000 seater, that's uh, it's a hell of a night, Joe Perry Project, Jeff Beak, Nice little set there. You know, doing a whole bunch of his you know, standard stuff. You're saying goodbye pork pie hat, of course going down, big finish. You know. ba -ba -ba um, this was the kink show. I was going to go to. So, yeah, so this was Jeff Beck with Joe Perry opening up. I was supposed to go see The Kinks with John Mellencamp opening up. I think the only two songs he's known to have done at this was uh, Hurt So Good and um, someone else had that. Had that, actually had that list of, yeah, The Kinks and John Mellencamp. And... Yeah, it hurt so good, and I need a lover. The only two confirmed songs. That's the set. That's the set for the Kinks. What a friggin' set! Again, just I had I was supposed to go to that. A friend of mine had tickets for the show, and uh, my mother wouldn't let me go. My parents wouldn't. They were like, "No, you're not. You're not driving down there with some kid in a car." And besides, I was going to the. Um, I was going to see Blue Oyster Cult, which is like right around the same time, right? Uh, so they're like, yeah, you have a concert to go to, all concerts are the same, one concert, you know, a concert here, a concert there, it's all the same thing, it's all just a concert. <laughs> like, that's not how concerts work. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was, uh, who was that? That was uh, ZZ Top opening up for, I believe, Loverboy. Or the other way around. Loverboy opening for ZZ Top. The Outlaws, Santana. Santana. Santana does well. They fog hat, the tubes. This one kills me. Kills me. Uh, it's Ozzy Osbourne. It's August 9th, 1981. He's got a young guitar player named Randy Rhodes on the band. Would have been, would have been great to... Uh, you imagine seeing Ozzy, again, Ozzy, in this tiny, tiny little venue. Literally a third the size of the Boston Garden. And you're seeing Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne. The, the only those are the only five songs that are like confirmed. I'll bet I can find. I wonder if somebody somebody over here might have it. It depends on the site you go to. That's all that somebody's listed. Uh, August night. So uh, the the opening band that night was a, a Def Leppard. It's this band, Led Zeppelin, opening for this other band, the Rolling Stones. Never heard of them. <laughs> There's the Def Leppard set list, and I don't think they have, I don't think they have the they have the lineup, but they don't have the I don't have the list. <laughs> you imagine you imagine Def Leppard in their prime, I, you know. I'm sure they sounded Journey, Rainbow, with the Scorpions opening. The Clash played there a couple of times. Three nights, right? And then uh, in the middle was Elvis Costello. Right? So the 20th and the 21st. Then the 22nd, it's Elvis Costello. Then they come back to 23rd. Uh, they, the, the, this other one, they have more. Billy Squire. They have more listings, though. I will say they... they they find more shows. Pat Benatar, Allman Brothers, Joan Jett, Alice Cooper. Like, that wasn't on the other list either. You know, Journey was, but not Alice Cooper. Oh, the Atlantics. Oh, my God. Probably opening up for Foreigner. Uh, they played my school. I remember seeing the Atlantics at my high school playing like a dance. The Atlantics. Oh, that's so funny. Blurs to Cult. Ted Nugent, Charlie Daniels Band, Jerry Garcia Band, Marshall Tucker Band, Scorpions, Rainbow. This is, I'm sure, all the same night. Uh, Joan Jett, Flesh Tones, Loverboy, Huey Lewis in the News. Again, with the Santana played there a lot, huh? The Clash. The Clash with Talk Talk is the opener, I'm assuming. That was the other band listed. Elvis, The Clash, and Pul Salama, it seems to be the opening band for The Clash. There's Aerosmith again. There's Jerry Garcia again. Uriah Heep. I think this is all the same night. It's Uriah Heep, Gary Moore, Crocus, and Def Leppard. Pretty good night. Um, this is a good. Um, this is the Ram the B fifty twos opening for the Ramones, or maybe it's the Ramones opening for the B fifty twos. But um, who do you think head is headlining there? I'm thinking it's the B fifty twos in nineteen eighty three. I'm thinking it's the B fifty twos. Right. Really? You saw the clash there, Surfy? No way. No way. Men at work. Who can it be now? Well, it's it's men at work. In excess. Probably opening for men at work. <laughs> Who can it be now? And there's the show I'm at. Coney Hatch. Fastway. <laughs> In 
in Iron Maiden at the Cape Cod Coliseum on August 27th, 1983. And then there is uh, the final show. That's it. That's it, boys. No more. The Santana, and that is it. And then here's a few more of the the listings. But the, it's not quite as complete as that other list. Um, but still, they had quite the the storied history. My God, I can't even imagine seeing like, you know. <laughs> This is the place. Basically, uh, if you look closely up at the wall, I don't know if you could, can you, can you go here and go in? Yeah. Right. You can see it's like Cape. Right. right the Coliseum, right. You, you can practically see the the lettering right underneath the <laughs> from where it used to be on the building the old Cape Cod Coliseum unbelievable so I, I wound up we we got tickets last it's general admission so it doesn't matter when you get your tickets and we got tickets like literally like a few days before we went to go see Iron Maiden at the Cape Cod Coliseum and uh, little did I know it was one of the last shows ever to be played there. But I mean, God, I always think back to that show as being just so friggin' amazing, you know? Just so, such a great venue and Iron Maiden sound and Fastway sounding. I don't even remember that other band, but I remember Fastway and I remember Iron Maiden, obviously. And they um, they sounded great and were kicking ass. Um, I'm trying to. Does somebody have the? Someone might have the maiden set list. Let me see here. Somebody, somebody have it? Here in maiden. Yeah. 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 They have both set lists, actually. So they open up with Where Eagles Dare, Sanctuary, and Wrathchild, The Trooper, Revelations, Flight of Icarus, Die With Your Boots On. I particularly remember Die With Your Boots On. And Flight of the Icarus. And the trooper. I remember, I definitely remember Die With Your Boots On. 22 Acacia Avenue is a little bit slower. And then, of course, they have the whole lead in with the audio um, uh, for the number of the beast, you know. For it is a human number. The number is 666. And, um,. The Tame of Land, they do a guitar solo, drum solo, Hallowed Be Thy Name. They do the Iron Maiden song, Run to the Hills, and Drifter. I could have sworn they did Prisoner. But maybe I'm thinking of a different show. Maybe I'm thinking of the Worcester show, which I saw. Just a couple of years later, they were playing the Worcester Centrum, right? By like 1985, 1986. This is 83. But like 85, 86. After the, um, you know, whatever that one was with the, uh, oh, uh, Aces High. After, when did Aces High come out? 84, 85, 86? That's, um, you know, I saw some footage of them recently. And, and God, did they look old. But uh, the, um, you know, uh, Nico had a stroke and uh, recovered. Uh, he's in. He's doing great, and uh, I think he did a show, right? And um, it was sort of like his return. So anyway, um, I happened to catch. They were at, I think, the Wacken Festival, and that was pretty recent or recent enough this summer. 
and uh, yeah, they they it looks like forty years have passed. <laughs> You know, it's so funny. The Centrum, I think, is still around, but I don't hear anyone ever booking it for a show. Shows really go... To, they don't go to those places anymore. They seem like most bands go to either the Boston Garden, right? Um, a much smaller venue like Roadrunner or MGM. It's like a 3,000-seater. And... Uh, Gillette Stadium. You know who was just in town? Beyonce. <laughs> Wasn't quite the Tay Tay level of craziness, but it, it was pretty nutty. Yeah, the DCU Center. Exactly, they went from Iron Maiden to the Iron Sheik. Thanks to Vince McMahon. You know, a band that was listed that I didn't see uh, was New England. Remember that friggin' band? Was that Charlie Farron? They're like, someone already used the name Boston. We're going with New England. It's a wider reach. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah, Johnny Winter played there. God, the Beach Boys. So many bands. Doobies. Imagine seeing the doobies. They all the any one of these Black Sabbath. Seeing Black Friggin' Sabbath. That is just insane. It's I mean you might as well see them in a club. Yeah, balloon, right? Yeah, you can't go wrong with Ozzy. Yeah, most of those tickets were a nine fifty to ten fifty, so just just on straight inflation calculator. Right? Um here we go. Um, in 19, I know for a fact one of those said 1978, and it was $10.50. $10.50. Uh, that would be about $49.14 now. You know what it is right now? It's like $850. <laughs> So a ticket, a ticket in 1978 for 1050 was the equivalent of spending about 50 bucks now. The Prince of Doftness. <laughs> yeah, Hirsch Gardner, right? Hey? 
Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, Hirsch Gardner card. He's been around, that name's been around forever. You saw Sabbath before their breakup with Ozzy, and Ozzy with Randy Rhodes, an idiot pine knob. Wow. Yeah, see, I was just a little too young. If it was just, a, if I was just two or three years older, I would have been at all those shows. By '83, I'm going to all those shows. '83, '84, '85, but not not '78. I'm about five years off. Yeah, right, it's a $50 cover charge just to walk into a bar now. <laughs> Tickets for the extreme, uh, for the extreme started uh, 45 plus, uh, 60. So that, so 45 is roughly in the right range, but once you add the, the service fee, now you're, now you're past inflation. But that, that's about right. Bobby went up to see, um, Bobby went up and, uh, stalked Nuno out in the parking lot to get his washburn signed by Nuno. I was like, look at you, you stalker. He's like, ah, you know, sometimes you gotta stalk a bitch. If you wanna, if you wanna get your guitar signed. He seemed to be, uh, genuinely, uh, nice and, uh, took a photo with him and got his, uh, and, and he signed his guitar, he signed his washburn for him. He has a, he has an N4. He had to drive all the way up to, to Maine, though, which was probably a good way to do it, because it's a, it's you know you're at the end of the friggin' not just you know New England, you're at the end of the whole friggin' country. <laughs> you're driving past everything to get up to Portland, Maine. There's not a lot of the United States past Portland. Maybe three more hours or four more hours of of U.S. Then you're not in the U.S. anymore. So, um, yeah, he uh, he drove up to Portland, uh, which was a great little venue to go to. And he just well, he, he hung out at the tour bus and finally got him. Yeah, Nuno, Nuno does look like he's permanently stoned. I wonder if he has TED, right, that thyroid eye disease. There's a dude I knew in like high school who had it, and his eyes were always red. Yeah, exactly. You're out. You're out driving on a, you know, a two-lane highway. <laughs> you guys, you guys hear that? Head Ted. Oh yeah. You live past Portland, I you exist. Mm, I don't know. Hit your hit your hand. Double check. Oh wait. Oh no, 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 okay. No, no, I am. I'm 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 feeling something back there. Uh, though when you really get up there. Once you really get up there, it gets, you know, if you've ever driven up to Moncton, um, it gets woodsy those last couple of hours. It, it gets, it really does get rural way up, up in, what is it, the Acacia National Forest? Is that, is that what's up there? Acadia? Acacia? You hear that? You hear that all the time, man? You know. I'd have to play it up here. Gotta, I gotta think about it. Carry eye drops everywhere. Yeah. K 
Acadia, yeah. I knew it was like Acadia or Acacia, something, heck of something. In fact, if you had a nice telescope and you really wanted to see the stars, that's how far you'd have to drive to get away from the friggin' lights of Boston. Like, even me, like, this many miles outside of the city, it doesn't matter. My sky lights up like crazy because there's so many lights in the friggin' city, you know? Oh, Tony, you are uh, consistently generous, and I appreciate that. Got your new B&G Stepsister guitar. Oh, nice. Uh, with P90s. This thing is killer. You should check them out. Oh, yeah? B&G, huh? I will check them out. It's a B, it's ampersand, and a G. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, just, um, before I forget, um, to Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens. I uh, I saw uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure in the, in the theater. Oh yeah, oh it looks like uh, Daryl has one. Daryl! Is that from uh, South Park? Daryl! Uh, Sepsis's Crossroads. Oh, oh, look at you. Look at you. Now, do you, does yours, do you have one like this without the cutaway, or did you go with the cutaway? Yeah, 85, was it 85 that that came out? That sounds about right. And then when did Pee Wee's Big Top come out, 87? 89. I, um, yeah. And one of the greatest, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the, um, did you ever see the, uh, what was it? Reno 911 Miami, right? The movie, right? When the rock is the condor, they call me the condor. I will not allow you to fail. 1988 was the big top, yeah. And uh, it gets to like the end of the movie, and it, they're they're like colossal failures, failing at everything. And they don't even have like money to get back. They're gonna take like a bus back to Denver from Miami. And uh, the Nick Swardson character is there. With uh, like his super short shorts and his roller blades and his like halter top, and he's like, "Yeah, I have my own like." They're like, "How are you getting back?" He's like, "I have my like own like private jet, like my dad bought me for like Flag Day." <laughs> they're like, "Okay," like I'm just waiting. You guys can ride with me in my private jet if you want. You know, with my they're like, "Yeah," he goes, "Yeah, I'm just waiting on my limo." <laughs> like, "Oh yeah, your limo? <laughs> Who's your limo driver?" He's like, "Barry, Barry." Bomb. <laughs> They're like, okay. And it's like this limo pulls up, and the guy gets out. He's like, "We're ready, sir." And they're like, "Are you Barry Bomb?" He's like, "Yeah, my name is Barry Bomb." <laughs> they all pile into the limo. And they pull up to his private plane, and his dad steps out from the plane, and it's Paul Rubens. And they're like, did you get him this plane? They're like, yeah, I bought it for him for Flag Day. <laughs> oh. They're going to like a CD listening party in Monaco. Because they're like, what are you doing in Miami? He's like, I'm, I'm down here like mixing my new CD. And they're like, okay, whatever. To go to like a CD mix release party in Monaco, you know.
Yeah, it's Terry, right? Are they rollerblade uh, branded inline skates, or are you just talking generically, Ben Tom, about inline skates? My wife said rollerblade. My wife was a reporter uh, many years ago, and she said rollerblade, and she, they got a letter from rollerblade saying, like, it was probably an innocent mistake, but Rollerblade is a registered trademark of the Rollerblade Corporation, and you probably more generically meant inline skates. Please do not use our trademark as a generic term, as it would d dilute and, you know, invalidate our trademark. Okay? <laughs> right? Kleenex. Um, what was the other big one? Xerox. Go Xerox this for me. Because they were the number one for photocopying. Kleenex. Um, Escalator was the number one brand of moving staircase. They lost theirs. Yeah, they were... Uh, they were not happy with rollerblading. It was a beautiful spring day. Kids were out rollerblading. And they were like, uh, what? <laughs> I think you mean inline skating. Uh, yeah, Jello. Jello brand gelatin. Of course, aspirin. But aspirin was just a. Uh, because it was owned by a German company, we just invalidated it because they were German and we were in a war with them. So, Aspirin did have a valid trademark. We just, it's still valid in other parts of the world, just not in America. They became, we, we made it um, generic. Oh, this is so good. Mm. Band Aid. Band Aid's another one. Right, Band-Aid bandages, <laughs> right, self-adhesive bandages. Yeah, exactly. Pee Wee's career took a little bit of a hit when he, he tried his hand at theater. Um, well, he has a funny line. He's like, you know, for for years, you would not see me in public. There, there was not a photo of me out of character like yeah I never wanted you to goes, but then one photo came out <laughs> like his mug shot Aged. Yeah, that's what we call the immutable march of time. You, you think I'm bad? You, sh you should see Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I saw a, a thing where they were like, interview with like um, Brad Whitford from Aerosmith. I was like, geez. And the photo they showed of him was from like I mean he still looks very old but I was like oh that oh that photo's a good twenty years old. And sure enough when he was actually on it oh my God. It was he easily he's like in his eighties now I think, right? Definitely high seventies. Can't remember Aerosmith came out in what, sixty eight or sixty nine? As a band and they had their first record in seventy maybe? Now, this band's been around. <laughs>
I know Brad Whitford looks like he's 109, right? Yeah, he's, he's had two lifetimes in life, one lifetime. He's selling all of his gear for way too much money on reverb right now. Really? Um, Brad Whitford is, really? Got that buddy and dad. I'm talking about these stalker turkeys. We've got the... The number one uptick we've seen is rabbits. God, we have bunnies everywhere. But I, after that, I'd say the, the turkeys. We had a couple at the window uh, in the spring. My cats were like, what? What the hell? What? Hey, how, bird, how's a bird get that big? <laughs> Like a, just always go four frets that diminish. Put a, oh, yeah, you put a camera at your bird feeder. Skunks, possums, and lots of raccoons, yeah. Mine's way too up high for anything big. Um, squirrels have tried to jump on it and have successfully made it, but... Um, I've uh, successfully cut the close stuff back far enough that they can't do it. What they try to do is bound up and, um, like... Uh, the uh, line going out for the friggin' air conditioner. They use it as like a jumping off point uh, and try to run up the side of the house and get to it. And they've been successful uh, a few times, but... But not really. Oh, really? Your groundhogs? My dad had a groundhog at his old place, but we got friggin' chipmunks, like, out of control. We, Our cats, when they were outdoor cats, our, uh, this new round of cats we have are all indoor cats. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you friggin' uh, cat boot right there. <laughs> uh, but these, these cats, they all stay in. They don't go out. So, I had a raccoon like on top of my garbage, on top of my trash can, and I walked down the driveway and it saw me and it just like sort of stood still as I walked within like three feet of it. He was like, you don't see me, bro. <laughs> I'm like, uh-huh, just like sort of stood still. Like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen coyotes out front. I saw a deer a couple of weeks ago out front. Definitely coyotes. I had an owl in the backyard once. I've heard owls out there. I saw one out there one night. Um, like way cool. I got to think it was a great horned owl. I don't know that we get really many owls other than great horned owls around here.
my dad uh, called me this week. He had a uh, he had a bees nest going on, not bees, but a wasp nest, yellow jackets, sort of growing out of control. And he's like, "Oh, you got to come." He goes, "But you got to just." He goes, "I I don't want to hurt the bees, and I got so many plants going." He actually even has a couple of beehives that he keeps there on the property to help with the, you know, with his plants. They're like stingerless, like little bees and stuff. I don't know where the hell he gets them. They, they're in this like little house with these tiny tubes. Anyway, he's got a couple of them. He's like, don't kill my bees, but you got to kill these wasps. I said, okay. So, I mixed up uh, a little bit of uh, the the nuclear option, Termidor. There's, there's no surviving it. And uh, spread a little bit. Well, I tried to do it once, and he, it didn't work because he had a grill uh, in front of it, like covered in a grill, you know, uh, you know, cover, uh, and all wrapped up. And so he had to wait till it was like nighttime, and he just he just wheeled the grill away from the wall. They're at the very bottom where the where the wall meets the house. They're going underneath the. They found a little crack right there, and they're going right in. So up there on a hot day, they were going crazy. I hit it with the termidor. I called him the next day. I go, how they doing? He goes, dead, completely dead. I'm like, yeah, that's that's about right. <laughs> That's about right. Yeah, we don't really have bears around here. You know, we're not that close. If we had a bear around here, you'd, you'd probably have to call the town and, and get, like, animal control on it because it'd be just too dangerous. We just don't have bears around here. Not enough space to uh, have a bear. We're just way too way too urban. It's, like, not going to not gonna work. There was a bear. The closest bear that I would say that got urban was uh, up in Burlington, Mass, uh, by, like, the Burlington Mall. I think there was a bear hanging out in, like, a pit up there waiting for a nighttime quiet to get out of there. But people kept going by. They were like, will you stop going by the goddamn bear? Leave the bear alone. You're going to frighten it. It's going to go out, and it's going to wind up mauling somebody. They're like, it wants to just sit there and chill out until everybody goes to bed, and then it's going to wake its way. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. At, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, when it was dead quiet, the bear made its way out of there and made its way into deeper woods. But man, they just could not leave that friggin' bear alone. We have other owls around here, but I don't think we have, I, maybe we do, but I don't think we really have the structures around here really for it. Oh, really? Full grown bull. Damn. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> I sent you two more super chats, but they didn't show up. It came off of Google Pay. Hmm. Can I see that on my page somewhere to see if it shows me on here? A viewer activity? Uh, was it tonight? Because tonight it's showing only one. The B&G Stepsister one. 
show my stream health and it shows um, it shows your um, and it shows sassy cat just because sassy cat wrote something under the member so it shows up as like a special chat post hmm hey weird And remember, it, it might be the conversion rate, but I doubt it. Um, remember when you sent me that 20? It shows my chat revenue is $12.19. That's, that's YouTube. You yoink, let's see, one for me and one for you and one, two for me and that's two for you and one, two, three for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they better give you the money showing your account. All right. Well, we can always, I can always work with you if they if they charge you for something that wasn't sent to me because it's not showing here. And like you said, it didn't show on the chat. So that is odd. I hated it. And the worst was I had a dude one night try to send me five bucks. He sent me fifty. He's like, "How do I get it back?" I'm like, "You don't? I don't. I don't know. That's that's YouTube system." Um. But I'll bet they'll figure it out. Maybe there was an issue and it's just on a hold. Vela mm -hmm. says, oh, okay, so that is the NZ conversion rate. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. It's the conversion rate. Had a coyote in your yard all winter. Had to keep the dog in. They're saying that coyotes are like the most successful, like urban, large mammal. Um, you know, to like maybe even more successful than bunnies and uh, squirrels. You know, they say it's really, it's they go. You, there's a lot more coyotes in the city than you can possibly imagine. I'm like, really? You think you'd hear about it more? They're saying no, no, they're friggin' everywhere. They're just really good at hiding. Like, I find that hard to believe, but they swear there is. <laughs> yeah. I was driving by the Burlington Mall, saw a coyote crossing four lanes of traffic. Wow. Thumbs out. Let's get that. That doesn't actually sound that bad to me. Uh, uh, is it me? That's a little low. A little low there, kid. But they're probably all low. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? You better, you better back that shit off and go right. Where is it? Wait, is this it? No, that can't be it. That can't be it. Oh. Oh, do, 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 do. Right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, wrong side. Come on, get in there. Let's 
it's uh, it's quite sharp. Ugh. Just back this out of here. There we go. Back this down a little bit. When you're that far low, you're almost better to just tune up from here. Because you're going to have to go through it tuning up from the fine tuners like this. You're going to run out of fine tuner space. You know? And you're going to be pissed. You're going to be a oh, god effing damn it. And you're going to be loosening them and starting all over again. So just do it from here. We're almost there. Almost there. That's looking good. That D could go here. That G could go here. A little bit more. I'm still going to have to tune a little bit after I close it because they don't, they never really go back perfectly. Wait. Had to fix my friggin' lawnmower this week. No, not the lawnmower, the, um, the, the chipper, the chipper blower. The, uh, there we go. Like I'm wheeling the thing around. Friggin' front wheel fell off. It's actually quite an assembly, right? Because it has to raise and lower. Um, but I got it. I got it. Took me just a little bit. Uh, get on there, you son. It's a, it was a 15th, 16th bowl, uh, the uh, uh, bolt. 15 sixteenths. Took me a second to find that wrench. Exactly, the best way to deal with coyotes is to paint a tunnel on the side of a mountain. this. There's my copyright warning. <laughs> God. 
God. It's like I'm trying to remember it in real time. Good thing I had the intro, right? D. That G chord. Wow! Need to fix your one more. Won't start to take the carbon. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so if you're getting spark and you just think you're not getting gas, or especially if it runs, and the last time you heard it running, it was going, which means <clears throat> that you're usually not getting enough fuel, getting too much air. It's wicked pisser. It's the same opening drums of the Shaft theme song. Could be. Humbucker on, it's a lot, a lot louder. Look, I'll pay it for you. What the fuck? It's funny, if you see the photo of Ed from the Cape Cod Coliseum, he's playing that stupid star guitar with the Dan Electro headstock. It's the first time I've ever seen him play it. <laughs> it's, at, it's at the Cape Cod Coliseum. <laughs> No, 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 don't take it off, take it off, leave it on. Yeah, that's it, a little more. <laughs> There's always a little thing in there with him. You, you realize he's really, he's really filling in a lot. He really made a three-piece band sound so much bigger, you know, adding sus chords and stuff, you know, what with all the sus chords and all. Yeah, exactly, a magic, a dancing hamburger. Yeah. Yeah, there's like some uh Forget that forget the dance in Hamburg. Wasn't there like some like smoking hot chicken a poster or something like that? I forget, I'm trying to remember now. <laughs>
that sounded good tonight, Speaker? Yeah, I, I, I should have uh, a different guitar for you next week, but I just didn't have uh, time this week to, to prepare, to prep, to get everything ready, get it all out. But I think this week is going to be rainier and muggier, which means less work outside and more work inside. Am I going to be up later? Probably not. So uh, my CE, I sure do. I really like that guitar. Stripe to the trailer. I think it'll, it's already a. It, you don't want to attract too much attention to it. I'll get friggin'. I think it'll be stolen. Though, admittedly, it would be found pretty quickly. I was surprised that ACDC never played the Cape Cod Coliseum. You know what I'm saying? Because they were sort of an up-and-coming band. They've known to play like, you know... I've heard that like ACDC played like, you know... Uh, like a ballroom in like Framingham or some shit, right? It's like... They were not playing these like top places, so... When they started to get big, I'm just surprised they never... When I saw ACD. The, a buddy of mine saw ACDC at the Orpheum, the Orpheum Theater. But that was in like 1979 or 80. It was the first tour, uh, maybe with Brian Johnson. Uh, I don't think he saw him with Bon Scott. And um, I saw them with uh, Brian Johnson in 81 for the for those about to rock. But, you know, the, the first, uh, they... Back in Black was already so mega huge that, you know, by then they were selling out the friggin' the garden. <laughs> ACDC, <clears throat> I feel like, you know, ACDC played like the Manning Bowl in like Lynn or some shit like that, right? Right? It's like some weird venue. <laughs> Gonna hit it. The Ramones did play there, but no one had their set. The only confirmed song was, uh, um, what you gonna call it there? Uh, their big hit there, Sedated. When did they play there? They played there. Do 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 do. Was it there? Nope. When did the? Oh yeah, there they are. Ramones. Oh, it was the Ramones in the B-52s. Kind of a kind of a double set. Yeah, to give you an idea of the size of the venues that they're playing, I don't know of these any of these other venues, but at the time that the B-52s are playing the Cape Cod Coliseum, they're playing the Agora Ballroom in Connecticut, the Philadelphia Zoo in Philly, 
the Forest Hills Tennis Stadium in Queens, New York, in the West Gym in Vestal, New York. I have no idea how big or small those places are, but uh, that's about what they're playing at the same time. Yeah, Def Leppard with Crocus and Gary Moore and Uriah Heep. There's a there's a friggin'. They open look at look at this set list. They open with rock rock till you drop, right? <laughs> Rock Brigade, High and Dry, Another Hit and Run, Billy's Got a Gun, Mirror Mirror, Foolin', Photograph, Rock of Ages, Bring It on the Heartbreak, I mean, holy shit. You know, Switch 625, a Guitar Solo, Let It Go, Guitar Solo, Wasted, Stage Fright, and Traveling Band. I, I feel like Foolin', Photograph, and Rock of Ages, rather being new songs from the, from the new album that they're mixing in, they would have made it more towards the end of the set. <laughs> right? But it's so early in the release of... This is the friggin' Pyromania tour. <laughs> uh, that is too funny. There's the... Still doing big, big ten inch. Back in the open up with back in the saddle. Sweet emotion, dream on. Lightning strikes, walk this way. Yeah. Towards the attic, and of course, train kept a rolling. <laughs> We got the, yeah. Wow, that's quite a set. Jesus. London, well, I guess the songs are pretty short. Open up with London Calling. Train in Vain. Surprised that they even, uh, Acknowledge that song. Wow, the, it, I mean, seriously. Rock the Cars by Police and Thieves. I mean, The Clampdown. I Fought the Law. The Clampdown again. <laughs> should I stay or should I go? Damn, that's quite a set. Elvis Costello, yeah. Accidents will happen, it's always the same. Watching the Detectives, what a great friggin' song that is. She is watching the Detectives. Don't get cute. Boop, boop. Again. Holy shit, a 35 song friggin' set. It's a, it's a hell of a night. You know? Pretty good. Pretty damn good. Getting your money's worth. You know? I was not a huge fan of The Clash either. And then, um... They appeared on, like, SNL, and uh, all the Clash apologists at school, they were like, well, the Clash is going to be on this weekend. I was like, all right, I'll check them out. And then that Monday, they were all like, they didn't have a good night. And I was like, uh, okay, I guess. Did they, did they ever have a good night? <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, no way. Tomorrow will be China Guitar Skeptic's birthday. Yeah, rest in peace. I, I still, it is still stunning to me that that guy has passed away. It really is. I mean, I see photographs of him. It's just so recent, you know? It's like, it's just, it's, it really does, you know, blow me away that that guy is gone. Just damn. So, so young. Some of the bills were weird in the early 80s. Yeah, like Doobies and Cheap Trick. Yeah, there was. I want to say that was one of the, one of the uh, nights here. It was like... Yeah, the Flesh Tones with Joan Jett. It, Lover Boy is playing. I got to think they're headlining and Huey Lewis is the opening act, but who knows? Yeah, Rainbow with the Scorpions. <laughs> Bobby in the Midnights. There's a band. <laughs> think about this who was who would be singing for rainbow on june 26th of 1982 it's certainly not dio i don't even think by june 26th of 82 is dio even still singing for friggin sabbath right i feel like like i feel like he's already like gone from sabbath and or, or is it 83 that the the, the first Dio, it's 83, the first Dio record comes out. So it's certainly not that. I, I, Graham Bomb, it's already gone, right? Oh, it's Joel Lynn Turner. Yeah, Joel Lynn Turner. I was going to say, I think Graham Bonnet is before, I thought Graham Bonnet was before um, Ronnie James Dio. Then came Ronnie James Dio. And Graham Bonnet was doing Alcatraz, right? With this young guitar player called uh, Ingve Malmsteen. <laughs> okay, so it was Dio, then Bonnet, then Joe Lynn Turner. All right. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. Walk out on stage with one of these. Good one, speaker. Was 
is it there? There it is. Vi uh, replaces who the the amazing guitar was it Warren Cucurullo playing with Zappa. And then he replaces uh, Ingvar Malmsteen and Alcatraz. Then he replaces Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> Poor bastard. I got all these. I was replacing like not just a good, good guitar player, but like one of the best. You know? Do, 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 do. Warren was Frank stunt guitarist. Now Warren Cucurillo is an amazing freaking guitar player. Oh yeah, did did Steve I replace Adrian Blue at one point? In what, King Crimson? That would be funny. I mean, why not? Uh Eve at the castle in Edinburgh in 1999. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. So, when he played with White Snake, yeah. I catch some of his shows, you know, a lot of people uh, record them on their phone. And the quality now is so friggin' stunning, and the, 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 not just the, the uh, video quality, but the audio quality. It's so friggin' good, you know, um, that, uh, you know, you can't, uh, you don't even have, you don't even have to go to the shell. <laughs> like, it sounds so friggin' good. All right, dudes, it's a little after nine. I got to call it a night. Thanks so much for hanging out. Special, extra, special thanks to anyone who contributed. I really, really do appreciate that. And um, hopefully we'll get that s- sorted by next week, Tony. See what the hell happened there. They're weird. Um, and, of course, uh, bro fist to my mod squad. Hashtag bro fist, hashtag mod squad. Hashtag feminism. And we'll do it all again next week. And there you have it. Hopefully, I'll, I should be able to get a video out this week because it's got, like I said, l- this past week, it was just way too nice out. It's like I can't sit in the house and record videos. It's like I have a small window to go out and, like, get crap done. Uh, this week is going to be hotter, more humid, and uh, just generally not as nice. So I should be able to record a video. I, I, I hope so. would like to. It's on, it's on my to-do list. All right. I will see you guys in a week, and until then, have a wonderful week, and rock on. No, you hang up. All right. I'm out of here. Later. <laughs>